A very warm welcome and good evening to all of you present here. The 19th anniversary of Madurai Bench of Madras High Court. The inauguration of Senior Advocate in Netrajan Memorial Lecture Series. A very happy evening to one and all present here. The meeting is called to order. Nothing can dim the light that shines from within us. May I now request the Administrative Judge of Madurai Bench of Madras High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice S. S. Sundar, to light the lamp. May I also have the pleasure of Honorable Mr. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar to light the lamp. May I also request our very beloved Additional Advocate General, Mr. Veera Kadravan, to light the lamp. May I please request our Additional Advocate General, Mr. Baskar, to light the lamp. Now may I request the Member of Bar Council of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Thale Muttarasu, to light the lamp. Thank you, Judges. A genuine smile of welcome can make anything possible. In order to give such a welcome, may I now request the President of MMBA, Advocate Mr. Srinivasa Raghavan, the Qualcomm, to give the welcome address. Happy evening to one and all. This is a momentous occasion for all of us. Madhuri Binch completes the teenage and enters the 20th year, and MMBA leaves adolescence and becomes an adult. It's an august moment for us because we grow with the bench. The achievement of the bench is the achievement of the members of the bar and the achievement of the bench is the achievement of the judges. They have been supplementing each other. I am sure that for each and every person here and the member of the fraternity, the bench is a milestone. And no doubt the contribution of the members of the bar and more importantly the contribution of the honorable judges to the jurisprudence and the march of law. So MMBA is very particular in commemorating the anniversary of the bench without any fail or let or hindrance. I remember last occasion we had it in the ADR Hall. The Honorable Farmer C.J. Madras High Court was the chief guest and Justice P.N. Prakash delivered a lecture. Similarly, today we are here. On this occasion, I welcome the Additional Advocate Generals, Bar Council Member, Learner Senior Advocates designated, and all the senior councils, the founder president of MMBA, Mr. Isaac Mohanlal, all the formal office bearers and the present office bearers to this occasion. And more importantly, I welcome the heroes of the today's function, Honorable Mr. Justice S. S. Sundar, who was the General Secretary of MMBA and had a glorious tenure. And I wholeheartedly welcome Honorable Mr. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar for having accepted our invitation. And once again, I heartily welcome Onandal and thank you. Thank you, sir. Acts of honor come from honor written upon the heart. May I now request the president of MMBA, Mr. Srinivasa Raghavan, to honor the administrative judge of Madurai Bench of Madras High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice S.S. Sundar, with a memento. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, sir. May I now also request the general secretary of MMBA, Mr. Ayram K. Selvakumar, to honor the Honorable Mr. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar with a memento. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, sir. Things get better and wiser with the age. So does our High Court and our MMBA. Marking the celebration of the 19th anniversary of our Madurai bench and the 18th birth anniversary of MMBA, as we became major, may I now request the Administrative Judge of Madurai bench of Madras High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice S. S. Sundar, and Honorable Mr. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar to cut the cake. Let me invite the founder president of MMBA, Mr. Isaac Mohanlal, and vice president of MMBA, Mr. Alagram Jodi, to hand over the knife. Here that goes. Happy 19th anniversary to all of the members of the bar present here. Thank you, Lordships, for participating in this humble celebration. For the commemoration address and inaugural address, 1862, Chennai got its High Court commissioned along with High Court of Kolkata, Bombay, and it was followed slowly by High Court of Allahabad in 1866. And then, slowly, 
Bangaluru High Court in 1884. These High Courts were commissioned and we, the City of Justice, Madurai, waited 142 years to have this 19th year celebration. We have a long history and a rich one too. It took 142 years of effort, struggle and planning to bring a bench of Madras High Court to this City of Justice, Namma Madurai. Having all the southern districts of Tamil Nadu under its jurisdiction, Madurai Bench was inaugurated by the then Chief Justice of India, Honorable Mr. Justice R.C. Lahote, and Chief Justice of Madras, Honorable Mr. Justice Subhashan Reddy. 15,209 square meters accurately, a building of majestic holding 24 courts of justice. With these few words, our MMBA is privileged to have our administrative judge of Madurai Bench of Madras High Court, Honorable Mr. Justice S.S. Sundar, to inaugurate this event of 19th anniversary celebration of the Madurai Bench of Madras High Court. 18th anniversary celebration of MMBA and inauguration of senior advocate Mr. N. Natarajan's memorial lecture and to deliver the commemoration address for the 19th anniversary of the Madurai Bench of Madras High Court and inaugural address for senior advocate Mr. N. Natarajan memorial lecture. May we please have Honorable Mr. Justice S.S. Sundar. Good evening to everyone. And about uh, years back, we unveiled the portrait of the senior advocate, Mr. N.N. And then uh, at that speech, I probably remembered a little, revered a little about him. But today, I am actually a little bit proud, actually. I am one among of you. I have come here as an administrative judge, actually. This is the first time, probably, <laughs> one among you now actually become actually the administrative judge here. And I am really proud to be here uh, as an administrative judge of Madhuri Bench of Madras High Court. And secondly, actually, uh, uh, I was always actually, you might have seen any number of occasions sitting in the room reading something whenever I don't have a work there. So I find actually the practice of lawyers spending more time in library has really, uh, yes, remarkably improved a lot over the period of years. And then the academic program uh, started here. Probably the whole credit goes to Mr. Isaac Mohanlal, the senior advocate, who started and then he was always actually, yes, uh, attracted people so that the, everyone will be interested in actually becoming a member and then they always uh, uh, try to be identify themselves with this particular association. That's something great. And now I find the several lectures, academic programs made this association really meaningful uh, to the name actually because the association is meant for ultimately as uh, providing equipping advocates therefore in that sense this association has done a great job uh, right from day one of its actually inception so I congratulate everyone who have actually spent their time and energy and then about Mr. Yen Nadrajan probably uh, I really thankful to uh, the organizers who have started this actually lecture series in the name of Mr. N. Nadrajan. He's a great scholar and then he's known for his academic uh, excellence, at least uh, in his subject, criminal law, he's actually. So I also remembered the very judgment in which actually, it's a difficult uh, yes, situation where actually the Honorable Supreme Court gave encomium to uh, Mr. N. N. for his appearance and for his actually, the way in which actually he conducted the case for the worst of <laughs> things actually because the, his clients are more actually uh, yes so it is in the sense actually I am really proud to inaugurate this lecture series and I am I wish every one of you who enjoy this actually 19th year celebration and next year we will have actually definitely the function is going to be a very big one everyone be prepared and then you also to show actually the academic excellence of advocates here because uh, even though uh, few of us who are elevated and known for their uh, practice uh, in Madurai bench. So everyone actually doing their job very well. But we don't have such a representation. Uh, yes, now actually 20 judges here. That means actually one third of the new judges also should come from actually this bench. So you, you, you have proved yourself now. You need not fight actually. So this will happen over a period of time. But still actually you have to hard work contribute more to the march of law. 
your contribution to the constitutional act or uh, the uh, yes, law is very more important and when you do that everything happens so i used to remember we were fighting for having 12 judges for this modari bench even though we command more than actually one third of the work so it is nearly 40% of the civil side and the criminal side have come here uh, yes, civil side actually i remember the statistics was more than 50% and criminal side also even then we did nobody bothered to have actually but it happened now so it is uh, out of uh, 60 around 20 we are here therefore uh, with this actually i conclude my speech for my brother to take his yes sir once for all thank you thank you lordship our honorable mr justice m nirmal kumar the judge of madras high court is not only a judge but also a great academician and a great orator not to mention our lordship started his practice as a first generation advocate and has done many things to the fraternity and he will be the befitting resource person with his rich experience both as an advocate and as a judge to give the topic reminiscence on the advocacy of Sri N. Nadrajan, a doyen of the bar. For this may I now request our Honorable Mr. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar, Judge Madras High Court, to deliver the lecture on the today's topic. Good evening all. I am very much happy to be in this August occasion with all and that too for a lecture of Mr. N. Nadrajan, who is fondly remembered as N.N. You all know, N.N. was the doyen of the criminal bar and he was a first generation lawyer. He came from a village in uh, Kanakampati in uh, Palani and from there he started his journey. He studied in the ordinary board school and you could have, every, anybody who had heard him, watched him argue, never will say that he is from a big convent or a big college uh, or uh, from uh, but he was very, he started that way, but he acquired, he developed, and thereafter he presented in such a way and conducted himself in such a way, he looked like an aristocrat and the language was excellent. Because it, not everybody has that opportunity, not everybody is gifted with it. It has been a developed quality. That is what I request all the youngsters, first generation lawyers, to develop such quality and raise to the occasion. I recollect in the year of his 60th of his uh, bar, 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 I mean bar experience, he had, we had a get together. At that time, he re recollected his early days and he, info, I mean, he was telling, he said that, do you all believe me that I started my car career in the criminal side? I used to stand in the Egmore court, you all know the old Egmore court, with a pad, with a green sheet in my hand to write the petition. Nowadays, everybody gets the printed format. I used to write in my own hand and I used to present. That was the way I started his life. That is, that is what is, that is the way he started. So from that level to reaching the Advocate General, Special Prosecutor for CBA case, Bomb Blocks case, Bombay Bomb Blocks case, and whatever you remind, whatever you name it, he had. He had a bungalow in Chennai. Everything was in the right way of profession. He had a bungalow in Chennai, beach house in Uttangudi. And uh, um, uh, Bangalore in Kodakanal, a uh, Delhi bar flat. It is all of his hard work and whatever he's earned in the profession. So you start the profession in the right way, do it sincerely, attend it sincerely. Nothing is not reachable, everything is possible. Mr. He, you all know he had started his career with. Uh, Judge Mr. Senior Mohan Kumar Mangalam, and thereafter he has been there. Um, my senior, you all know, Mr. K. Ashogan is one of his juniors, and we all live as a family. We all call us as NN family. And you all know the his legacy of NN, more than 200 to 250 juniors, yes, from him, from his staple have come out. And I think very few would have the rare, I mean, this credit of having almost five or six senior, five senior councils. Mr. M. Ravindran, who was <coughs> additional solicitor general, my senior K. Ashogan, R. Shanmu Sundram, the present AG, N. R. Ilango, Kumarayasan, uh, additional AG, and uh, Mr. Arvind Dattar, he was with Ramani Natarajan, associated with Ramani Natarajan. 
this was the kind of advocates he could prop up and crop up and make them reach this level. And most of the cases you could have seen all are first generation lawyers. He was very particular in developing, giving opportunity, training the first generation lawyers. And first generation lawyers reaching such height and being successful in the profession is the hallmark of that gentleman, Mr. Enen sir. Mr. Enen was one of the best criminal lawyers in the country. During his time, criminal lawyers, the ca criminal lawyers of caliber of Mr. N.T. Vanamamale, Rangwa Jalu, Punjab Gason, who joined the trial, carving a niche for themselves in Chennai, and in Tamil Nadu, little persons whom I know, it was Mr. Vridhachala Vridhiyar, S. Narsiman of Salem, Salem Partha Saradi, Mr. Ra Ramachandran from Coimbatore, uh, DLR from Chengalpet, uh, Vellur, Mr. Vardarajan, and Mr. One Kalyana, Mr. Kalyana Sundaram from Nagapatnam. These were the big lawyers, criminal lawyers, trial lawyers who had achieved and outshined during their period. Mr. Ennan was origin as an, is an original thinker, had a unique approach in a given case. His approach was always to study human conduct and present the case based on human conduct. He had a direct approach to elicit the truth instead of fencing around the block to block the witness. His approach to a case was to see whether theory propounded by police would establish the guilt of the accused. When any advocate engages him, the initial study was whether the case involves circumstantial evidence or is there any direct evidence. Thereafter, the study of the case related to how the chain was linked by the police to prove the guilt of the accused. Since he was an original thinker, he would often rethink and would never shy away from admitting that what he believed earlier was wrong and thereafter taking the opposite view. He was always a thinker, always on his foot, depending upon the situation, depending upon the circumstances, depending upon how the witness answers and how things goes on, he will frame his questions and get the answers what is required. While conducting a case, a lot of energy and thought was spent on studying the judge. He was also a good reader of the judge because that is very much required for us as an advocate. And he would figure out what was on the judge's mind so that the, the doubt would be addressed almost immediately. And whenever he was going back from the court after finishing, you would normally take two or three, the juniors will accompany him. And he would ask the juniors, what was the judge's reaction to this question? What was the judge's face reading? Those things, because to understand in what way the judge is thinking on that, so that in the future, he can, he can, I mean, the, immediately thereafter, he can correct himself or impress the judge on the way he thinks on the line. This, this was the interactions he was having. And he normally gives, I mean, assigns a case to three, three, junior, three of juniors. Likewise, he'll compartmentalize and give and discuss with them threadbare. And when the trial is going on, he would say that your eyes is not only with the witness, your eyes when you are in a trial court, your eyes as a trial lawyer should be thrown on all the sides. You have to look on all the directions, find, find out what is the small changes going on, what is the reaction. And, that, and you have to proceed. But this is the training you used to give. And whenever a good point is appreciated by the judge, he will not hesitate to say that this must go to my junior. He was the person who has given me the, this point for me to argue. That was his greatness of that man. And likewise, he was also harsh with the juniors when they don't do the work. That is for the purpose of them to change themselves, understand their situation. And in his office, it was, you could see that in his office there is no cubicles. There will be a long table and a bench. And that to show that all juniors are one, no senior junior, amongst the juniors, all seniors are one, sit there across, nothing, nothing, nothing secrecy. Everybody will know what the other man is preparing. Everybody will exchange because a lot of thought process has to go on on the criminal side. Thought process, so he would make that, that is the way, it, and never he had introduced, I mean, when you introduce anybody, he will never introduce, he's my junior, he will only say, he's my colleague. That was his greatness, he would say, he's my colleague. That is the way you introduce us. 
And in criminal criminal side, you know, there was not much respectability earlier. And and that and we were not and criminal side we were not open to the finer sides of the life. He was the person who would host parties, get togethers, and it will be juniors separately and also with the families, and that will be a regular phenomena. And he would take us to the he was a member of all the clubs. He would take us to take us to the clubs make us feel that one among them no we are not less we are not a less model at than the other uh, because normally it will be the constitutional lawyers civil lawyers who will be there adorning the clubs and higher places he will take us make us feel that we are we are no way less to them we can also have we can also see the other side of it it is not that we running around only magistrate court and appearing in sessions court we don't stop you elevate to yourself to that level that was his fineness of him. He would take us to all the places. Take us in the sense it will not be only Ennis Junior. He will see that his junior's junior. Likewise, only we are not because I, I was only Ashokan's junior. We were taken out to the parties and all his get-togethers because he would call all the juniors, juniors to come, and that was the way. And he will interact with us, take us to that. He will see that when top when the top notches of the industry or on the city will be there in the club. He will say that. Let him be there, man. Let you you carry on with those things. We will make you will make it very easy, and you will also elevate your thought process, your mind, and your level of living in the society. That was the greatness of he gave to the criminal lawyers. That was what we felt, because that was the way we we, we said we are no less mortal to anybody. That way he gave respect to the civil, uh, criminal lawyers, and uh, furthermore, <coughs> you all know that he was very strong in uh, evidence act. And uh, he was he was an ex he was strong in evidence act as well as the all the special I mean arms act may it be arms act medical evidence handwriting and all the expert he was very ex very 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 well thorough well prepared thorough he would read lot of books he was a voracious leader reader and he would put the expert in shame by cross examination and breaking the case that was his so, uh, specialty of him. You know that when he was engaged in the Rajiv Gandhi case, we all know when the Rajiv Gandhi case, when he was engaged, he had appeared before the Supreme Court and said that it is only 30 days more for it is only 30 days short time has been given. I have to read around 8,000 pages of translated evidences and 2,000 page of the judgment, and within one month, it is not possible for me for us to do justice. He asked time. Supreme Court was very stern because you know the sensational and the importance of the case. Supreme Court was very stern, and they said no, you have to do it. Then he took up the case. He argued, argued, argued. The opening mark, what he the opening mark, what he made is that he would say that Rajiv Gandhi. You know that Rajiv Gandhi. It's a bomb blast case, killing 41 people. And uh, for Rajiv Gandhi, as well as 41 people, including the common man, but he he opened the case and said that in this case, Tada will not get attracted. It is not a case of extremist. Everybody was actually laughing at him, and there was barrage of questions put to him. But his answer was that he said that. The aim of the assailant was only Rajiv Gandhi and not others. If it's the aim was to kill everybody, the impact and the explosion would have been different. They were only aiming one person, and in the process, others have got done. So, it was not a case of terrorist activities, which ultimately they agreed and they accused in the. As far as Tada case, they were acquitted in the appeal before the Supreme Court. That paved the way, gave the way for the freedom. Now the accused in the case are enjoying. But for that, otherwise that would have been a block, and they could not have never come out of the prison. So the foundation was laid, laid, laid by him. Yes, that that was also there, and. Uh, They said that, um, uh, Mr. In fact, uh, Mr. One second, I also made a note of it. He, they gave Enkomi and Mr. Wadwa. 
one second. Uh, Justice Vadva observed in the judgment, like this, a heavy burden lay on shoulders of N. Natarajan. He carried with aplop. His presentation of the case showed his complete mastery, mastery of facts and law. It was a pleasure to hear him not losing his poise even for once. He was fair in his submission, conceding where it was unnecessary to contest. That was the incoming which was given by Justice Vadva in the judgment. And that 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 is that was the way of his arguments. You also we also know about the Bombay blast case. He was the chief prosecutor. We all I think everybody should be aware of it. There was one petitioner monger, a busybody, making allegation complaint against Mr. N. Natarajan, because Mr. N. Natarajan had initially filed the charge sheet. At that time, he was arguing that Section 121, 120A has to be included and charges to be framed against the accused and that was the initial argument and you know that it was a long case and a lot of accused it took months eight months took for framing the charges and then when the when the final framing of charges came he said that i'm giving up 121 and 121a with regard to the others because i don't have evidence with regard to the other offenses let us proceed at that time the busy body man one bk subarao he who had also uh, he had filed a petition under section 340 stating that he had he had caused perjury by filing such petition initially he took one stand and thereafter he is taking giving back taking up another stand and he filed a three, three uh, petition under section 340 the trial court had also taken it on file tara court then thereafter issued a notice to him thereafter it was taken up to supreme court and supreme court in the case of N. Natarajan vs. B. K. Subarao, 2003, 2 SCC 76. Thereafter, they took up and considering all the submissions, in that they have observed by no stretch of in, in paragraph 10. I am reading. You read it will be in short, short judgment. It's interesting. By no stretch of imagination can we say that the stand of a counsel, however inconsistent it may be. At the different stages of the proceedings can amount to offences advert to under Section 195 CRPC. If the court begins to issue notice for prosecution or as to why inquiry should not be made in the matter or to launch a prosecution, no advocate can function with safety, nor can he assist the court with the necessary fearless which is required of him. So that was the thing, and they said that advocate. At either it's going to be defence advocate or the prosecution, they are at will to concede the case or change the attitude, which cannot be faulted with. That was and that was the greatness of that man. And the Supreme, it, it was argued on behalf of N N. It was uh, argued by former uh, Attorney General K K Venugopal. K K Venugopal, N N, G Ramaswamy were all close friends in their initial stages of their practice in Madras High Court. They used to go for hiking and other things. That is other part of it, but still, Supreme Court took all this into consideration and gave that. So, uh, not only as a defence lawyer, even as a prosecutor, he made that a position a respectable one and gave them the authority to have the case in the way which a prosecutor has to conduct, depending upon the case, and he is the master of the case and not to be cowed down by the other external factors. That was the greatness of N N, and. Uh, With regard to his approach and other other things, I've already informed. And and Mr. Anand Sir would always insist on presenting the case in the simplest manner possible, as the objective was always to convince the judge in simple terms. He would insist that no one, one should not show off his vocabulary skill or knowledge when addressing the court. likewise he would say that once a judge is once a judge is agreed on one point you should leave it as it at that stage you should not try to show off that i have read more and want to address more and ultimately you will lose the case so you try to understand study the judge if he is convincing he is convinced with that point thereafter keep quiet that is all and uh, and likewise whatever you read and whatever your skill you don't try to show off there 
the case is to present it, convince the judge, and come off. That is all. And not more than that. That was his way of practice and addressing the court. And he would also suggest to us, that is his juniors, whenever time permits, whenever you take a criminal case, visit the scene of occurrence. Visiting the scene of occurrence is a must in a criminal case so that you can understand the topography. Not only in murder case, even in trap case or any other case, you go to the scene of occurrence, you, you have the, I mean, um, uh, visit, visit the place, you visualize and get it into your mind. It will be easy for, uh, for you to understand and put forth the cross-examination. At that time, if you just, a small, small spark might turn the witness, because you know the topography of the area, you question him on certain aspects of that place, and where uh, he, he tries to gloss over or I mean, wants to cover up certain points, at that point, this visiting the scene of occurrence would be very useful to you. And once the witness feels that he has been caught on the wrong foot, then thereafter he'll start making whatever uh, answer you expect to give. So that breaking of ice, you need to have the visiting of scene, a scene of occurrence would be an important factor. And uh, marshal the facts thoroughly. That was the advice he used to give. Facts, you must be very thorough. And each time you come, uh, come up with a case, you take the bear act, you take the law, read again and again, because as you prepare for one case and take the law and read, in that perception you will be looking at the law. So each time you will be looking at the law, the same law, but for a different case, for a different facts, in your perception may change for depending upon your understanding of the case. So each time you take a facts, marshal your facts, then go to the law, and each time it might give. So each time you should not fail to read the law, and all the tri criminal lawyers, trial lawyers, you must have a handbook on you, with you, which is of CRPC, evidence and IPC handbook. It is a must, it has to be there. A pocket note has to be there to ma make, uh, to <coughs> note the other uh, seniors or somebody is arguing, giving a point or referring to a citation. These were the fundamentals which he was teaching us. And this was on the professional side. On his personal side, he was a great hiker, he was a hunter, and he used to, he's a tennis player, he's a golf player, and what else, what not, he, he, and he also knows to chill himself. Everything was with his juniors and friends, and juniors were all treated as family members, and he had craze for the cars, he used to buy cars whenever new model comes, and he will not use the cars for more than three years or so. And the third year, it will be given to one junior, but at the market rate. So that, 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 that uh, privilege you have. And one more is that you also have the privilege of having the my senior's car, or NN's car. So that was the way he used to do. He had properties in that beach house at Uthandi and as well as the Kodakanal house. He had that extra space after he constructed the building. He had some extra space. Those Place, places and all were given to his juniors only at the market price, not at the market price, what he bought after years. That was his generosity, bigness of him. And uh, he had done only good to the juniors. And uh, more than 200 to 250 persons have been trained under him. And I could say that the success rate of the youngsters or the juniors from him are all been almost 100%, except for one of you who are gone for few would have gone for some employment or would have left for other purposes. Who were in the profession or from, the, from his office had all succeeded, were all made. Maybe they were not achieved to the level to be recognized by everybody, but sustaining themselves for what we came to the profession. To that level he had done it, that we all should appreciate. And finally, I wind up by saying that portals of both the trial courts in India and superior courts would hardly see a person of his caliber who dominated criminal law both at trial stage and in appeal. And we all know that dialing 100 is an emergency number for anybody to approach police for any distress. Likewise, 100 law chambers is the place when a person life and liberty is to be secured and saved, we have to run that. Thank you all. Thank you, Lordships.
for the insight into the life of Sri N N N Natarajan by quoting that the right way can take you to the luxurious life. Your happy oration is great input to all of us present here. Thank you once again. Honoring the sponsor, before we end our today's session, it's our duty to honor our even sponsor, Mr. S I Abdul Kalam Bagadur Shah. May I now request our president to honor our even sponsor with a memento. Now it's time for vote of thanks. Before that, with the permission of the chair, let me read a poem. One aravanai pil, one nod naanum, yen valarchi yen nod niyum, mahil vadal niyum yena kor annai annai. Happy birthday to our bench and MMBA. And this poem is recited by none other than our president, Mr. Srinivas Rao, sir. Thank you, sir. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. May I now request the general secretary of MMBA, Mr. Ayram Selvakumar, to propose the word of thanks. Anayvarakum anakam. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver the word of thanks uh, to one and all, those who made the event in a grand uh, success. We all know pretty well that uh, in the workload of the uh, administrative research of this honorable court, the one part is the lordship has to hear the big issues and dispose the matters. It's one part. And another part is concentrate and uh, look into the, all the affairs and administration of the entire uh, honorable court is another part. And the rest of the his lordship's tight schedule, he has uh, graciously consented to participate the our cake cutting function as well as the entire event. On behalf of MMBA, I wholeheartedly thank our uh, admin, admin justices, <laughs> Honorable Justice S.S. Sundar. Anitanam Nallavai Ketka, Anitanam Andra Paramaitaram. Listening of uh, such uh, speeches and uh, participating in the uh, seminars and other things, we can upgrade ourselves as well as uh, we are, those uh, speeches and other things take us to another level. Today, the soothing speech rendered by the Honorable Justice about the, the dying of the bar, Sri Ennan, that some portion, I think, will make a great impact uh, among the juniors to lead the way that was adopted by the Sri Ennan. And uh, I was told uh, by my Tunnel Valley senior advocate that uh, Sri Ennan was so close and so friendly with his juniors. Affirming that uh, statement, uh, His Lordship also mentioned more specifically about the movement with his juniors. So uh, while I am thanking the uh, senior members, uh, Sir Veera Gadiravan, Sir Sri uh, Meena Chandram Sir, Isaac Mangalal Sir, Armandival Sir, Sir Baskaran Sir, I request them to adopt the same policy uh, on behalf of MMBA, I thank uh, His Lordship, uh, Mr. Justice, Mr. N. Nirmal Kumar, for rendering a, a splendid, beautiful speech uh, that make the audience in a spellbound. And uh, I thank all the senior councils and the uh, law officers, past and present. And uh, apart from that, our third, our third, அன்புடையர் <laughs> 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 I'll take this opportunity to thank the one who thanked everyone. 